بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي ونسلم على رسول النبي الكريم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته so, الحمد لله tonight we recited the 11th juz of Quran and uh, the discussion of the munafiqeen were continuing Nabi alayhi salatu wasalam said the signs of the munafiq are three that is in which has been mentioned in this in, in one riwaya narration but other signs have also been mentioned in other areas as well. So it's not restricted to three, but it's more than that. The salient ones amongst those are some of which we discussed yesterday in terms of their attendance to salah, for salah, what condition they would come, and um, the fact that they're conceding the kufr and uh, exposing and expressing Islam outwardly so as to appease the Prophet Sallallahu and the Sahaba around him. But they also were concerned about societal name and blame, so as they would come for salah. And Rasulullah said the most difficult salah on the munafiqeen are Fajr and Isha. Because that's the time when the body wants to rest and to just uh, sleep, you know, and take it, take things easy. But the munafiqeen would also come because they, would, didn't, they were afraid of the blame from society. Unfortunately, we have taken it to the next step and we don't care about society. And subhanAllah. So may Allah Ta'ala bless us and make it easy for us. I am amazed sometimes, you know, even uh, I was just telling the brother and Salah, I was like, when the children are telling the other children not to make noise, then you know there's a serious problem. You're like, I'm hearing the children telling each other, shush, shush, shush. Like, subhanAllah, if, you know, <laughs> I was like, where are the fathers? I've said it before, I think maybe there's a fatherless society here. SubhanAllah, there's no fathers available in this place. Allahu Akbar. I know if it was a, if it was a family of, a member of mine, Forget a child, any family member that does anything wrong. It's like you cringing and you wish the earth would swallow in front of you. you know? SubhanAllah. But unfortunately, we live in this uh, Western society where this hurriyat has entered our mindset. You know, this hurriyat is a very bad virus. It's worse than this COVID. Hurriyat is this free mind. Everybody is free to do what they want. Child is free, mother is free, father is free, society is everything and everyone is free. The mind is free. So there's, there's uh, harms that come from every aspect, at every angle. SubhanAllah. Unfortunately, we fail at merging freedom with culture. So SubhanAllah, when we come from a certain culture, restrictive culture, and we come into a free society, we, we then feel that that or death was incorrect or it was wrong. And then we adopt this completely free Western culture. And then it, 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 it opens up so many vices for us on every different level. And eventually the fabric of our home breaks down. And when it's too late, then we seek help and assistance. But then it's already, you've passed the bar already. And, you know, the, the ulama and the scholars and the, the council workers, the counselors, don't have a magical wand. You know, subhanAllah. Uh, we receive calls. Uh, just today I received a call where uh, the sister is suffering at her, in a home for, the, for so many years. Brother is a musalli of the masjids. You know, people know him. So we, we come to the masajid, we show ourselves as we are too great. And we are performing our salah. And meanwhile, internally what's going on, only Allah knows and the family knows how they are suffering. So this is the, the ills of the society. So, so hence, um, uh, and, and on this aspect, you know, subhanAllah, on salah itself, this new trend or this new, not so new, of uh, hopping between masajid. So I call this here tarawih shopping. This is not window shopping, brother. This is not a shopping spree. Okay, let's go to this mall, let's go to that mall. Let's look at the layout of this one and see the display of that one. No, no, no. no. What is the whole purpose of Taraweeh? Taraweeh means al-julus wal-istiraha ba'da kulli arba'i raka'atin. To sit and rest. So the Taraweeh is supposed to put you into a mental framework of, of ibadah and, and seclusion with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when you come to the masjid, the Taraweeh should be performed in a manner where you come to the masjid, it should be slightly later than what we currently have it, you know, and then after every four rakats, you sit for the duration of the four that were performed. That is proper tarawih. The people of Makkah Bukarnama, after four rakats, they would do tawaf individually. And then they would go back to four again. And then like this. People of Medina Munawwara, they said, we don't have tarawih, we don't have the Kaaba, so we can't do tawaf. So indiv individually, in Firadan, they used to do their own four rakats of nafil. After every four in Jama'ah. Hence, the Imam Malik Rahimullah's madhab, according to one riwayah, is 36 rak'ats of tarawih. According to another, another is 40. 
Because you know the madhab of Imam Malik was based on Amalu Ahlil Medina, the practice of the people of Medina. So if you if you put all of those four four zakats together, it comes up to 36, and if you count the last four, it comes up to 40. Although the practice is on 20. So Taraweeh is supposed to be an ibadah in which you are connecting with your maker. It's not a shopping spree, brother. You know, you go to this masjid, or you go to this masjid, or you go to this uh, location or that area. You, yani, Ramadan is a, is a moment and a time of the year where you're plugged in. you plugged in. Yani, you, this is your plug in to Allah. You're recharging, you're rejuvenating, you're refreshing, you're updating yourself, you're doing everything. You, you, you know, formatting and resetting. You know, subhanallah, our deen is not a passion. Tarawih is not a shopping and fresh fashion. We go, you know, go this masjid, go that masjid, go that masjid. And then eventually there's no spirit of Ramadan left. You know, you no longer enjoy your Ramadan. Then your Ramadan and your ibadah becomes one of, you know, what, uh, you know, uh, uh, pleases uh, your, your palate. And your, it becomes an entertainment. Okay, so this qari is beautiful or that reciter is very nice. And mashallah, you know, this is not what it is. Yes, if you know of a specific recital that you are, uh, uh, that your heart feels sukoon, where you are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the past, I've had brothers coming to me, they say, Shaykh, when you recite sometimes, you know, although we don't understand a word of Arabic, but we feel like we understand the Quran. So, when you, re when you recite and listen, listen to the Quran, the word should land on your heart, and it should take you to an, a, a, a position of ecstasy with Allah, and a, and a different realm altogether. But it, this cannot be uh, achieved if you go from place to place and you hop around and then what happens is that when you do that you never get the full uh, the full the, the picture and the full sweetness and the leather of that taraweeh and the ibadah and the salah and then the you open up the doors of criticism you open up the doors of ghibah you many many uh, ills are found in that now you got to you know your timing also you got to worry of how much time you're spending here how much time you're spending there there's heaps and heaps of wrongs that goes along with this practice so this is something we need, unfortunately we don't talk, talk about in our society. We need, in our circles we must talk about this here. And now you will find the elders, you know, the, 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 the elders of the, the community, they will come, they will come early to the masjid, they will find a specific spot, and that will be their daily routine. And through this they will, they will elevate, through this they will, they will find their, their moment of, of peace and the moment of connection with Allah Azza wa Jal. But we, we cannot have this, we cannot experience this. Why? Because we are doing Tarawih shopping. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Again, the fear is we do not want to fall into the line of nifaq, the line of hypocrisy. May Allah ta'ala protect us all. So the munafiqeen would come to Rasulullah sallallahu So I was saying the hadith early on. Uh, number one, he says, sallallahu alayhi when they when they make a promise, they always break the promise. The wa'ada akhlafa. When they make a promise, they do not hold up to that word of that. They always break that promise. So again, as we said yesterday, remind ourselves, the fear for us is that we do not want to fall into that, uh, the, the, the practical format of nifaq and hypocrisy. Our hearts may be free of, of uh, you know, the technical nifaq and the technical hypocrisy, but we may be well falling into the practical side of nifaq and hypocrisy by way of our amal, by way of our practices, the way we conduct ourselves. And this is very serious and very dangerous for us. Because slowly, slowly, and slowly but surely, we will then also then start to discard some serious uh, matters of the deen. And we will start to discard faraid, we will start to discard the, the major uh, you know, um, practices and observances of our faith. So this is dangerous. So when they, when they speak, they always speak, they do not hold up their promises. When they are entrusted with any form of trust, they always breach that trust. They always breach, breach that trust. So a, a believer is one that you can trust him even if he's your enemy. Rasulullah was Al-Ameen before he became a Nabi. Sallallahu was known as Al-Ameen before he even became a Nabi. He became a Nabi at 40. And all the years before that, from the young age of teenagehood, he was started to be called Al-Sadiq Al-Ameen. Because Amana, go, um, Nifaq and Kufr goes against the concept of Amana. Iman and Amana go together. That is why he said, La Imana, Liman La Amana Talah. 
There's no iman for the one who has no amanah. If your trust is in shambles, then your iman is also in shambles. At some point in time, your iman also might leave you as well. And amana is not only rela- uh, restricted to physical possessions and objects. No. Amana is everything. If I share a statement with you, I need not to tell you, brother, please keep this to you. You must I hear it and remove it from your other ear or hear it and digest it and forget about it. And not share it with the next individual. You have no right to do that. And uh, this is where the phone comes into uh, a problem. Because something, it's like a, the, the phones of out nowadays, it's like a trampoline. The minute information bounces is and we bounce it back out somewhere else. Subhanallah. So, if a person comes and shares something with you, uh, a personal matter with you, unless you have the permission, you cannot divulge that amana. So, amana is not, again, as I said, not only specifically related to objects. Likewise, amana in time, in your time management. Your time is an amana. So, when you are an employee, then that time is amana. The, the possessions of the workplace is an amana. Everything is an amana. So, depending on the kind of contract you have, you need to be uh, you need to be diligent and uphold the clauses of that specific contract. And subhanallah, this body that Allah has given us is an amana. Our children are an amana. Uh, our time is an amana. Everything is an amana. So uh, it's not specifically related to items. So we that to mean a khan, but the munafik is one who, when they are trusted or something, they breach the trust. We that ahad the ghadara. When they make a covenant or a pledge or something, you know, you give somebody your word. Brother, I give him my word, I shake you my hand, it's a done deal. And the guy forgets about it. SubhanAllah. And this happens a lot in money matters. You know, you, we, we always uh, look at the wajah and the face. And we say, you know what, brother is a good man. You know, he's, um, he's a musalli in the masjid. I used to say always before and repeat it, today deen is restricted to salah only. When you come to the masjid and you see people in the masjid, and the, the minute people go outside of the masjid, the, the deen left in the masjid and the outside is a different, a different human being, different individual altogether. Subhanallah. So your word is something which is uh, your your kaf. You know the word of a believer is like the shake of a hand. Previously you would have the shake of a hand with something was something serious, was something big. But I shook your hand on, the, on this matter. So the munafik is one is always going against his word. When he argues, then it's always vulgar. Can never maintain his sanity. Can never maintain his sanity. A believer, what we said the other day, is one who's always maintaining his sanity, his consciousness, his seriousness. He's not one who loses his mind. The munafiq is one who can very quickly lose their mind. So they become vulgar, then they become abusive, verbally abusive, and then they start swearing. And then, you know, your mother comes in the picture, and your sister, and this person, and that person, and your whole dunya comes in the picture. Well, th- these are signs of a munafiq. And so, we have to actively work at these uh, uh, illnesses of the heart. It's not just like a, you know, uh, you know, you go into a machine and you're going to come out clean from there. No, we have to. That is why Rasulullah said that the highest echelons of Jannah are, are reserved for the one who can, who can actively beautify and perfect his character, because perfect and good character doesn't just happen. It's not just like a, the Darwin theory or like a microwave. It just doesn't happen. You have to work to fix it and perfect it. Nabi uh, Sallallahu said, لِمَنْ حَسَّنَ خُلُقَهُ For the one who can beautify his character. So you need to identify your weaknesses. That is why the tafakkur comes in. The pondering and the, the soul searching and the, the thinking comes in. And uh, you need to take an account of yourself. I was mentioning earlier on to somebody... Ramadan is a good time to take an account of yourself. The thoughts that come in your mind, then you need to, if it's a good thought, alhamdulillah, if it's a bad thought, you need to be concerned. Hey, is this me as my personality? Because the devil is not there to trouble me. So if I'm thinking in this line, it means there's something I need to be concerned about. If I'm doing some things which are not supposed to be done, then I have cause of concern. Why? Because now the devil is not there to make me do it. So that means my personality has become such. My akhlaq and conduct has become such. This is my being of who I am now. So Ramadan is this beautiful and good opportunity when these big shayateen, these gang leaders are unshackled. They are in jail. And you are for yourself. And it's you and your nafs. Where is the, where is the, the compass of your nafs? 
This is the time in Ramadan when you will be able to understand, engage yourself and take that good account of yourself. So, so have these moments of tafakkur and thought and thinking and, and pondering on, on your life and, and the things you do, the way you think, the way you speak, analyze yourself. You know, go through this accountability on a daily basis. Have I hurt somebody? Have I done somebody wrong? You know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we hear the beautiful fadail of, of the hadith in which Allah ta'ala has forgiven people on, on certain actions which they have done with sincerity. Like the brother, he didn't have much of nafil, uh, nafil uh, deeds. He had the basic faraid and wajibat like every other person, but he was guaranteed jannah. Why? So when, when he was asked, and then he said, look, I don't have anything spe special that I can think of. But the one thing I can, that comes to mind is that when I go to bed at night, my sadaqah is that I free my heart of any malice from anybody. I hold no grudges. So that's my sadaqah. And I, if, if somebody done me wrong, also I free, forgive that person, genuinely forgive that person. So he was sincere in that, and Allah Ta'ala forgave that person. You have heard the, uh, the hadith, when the person is brought to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, what have you presented for your jannah? Nothing Allah, I've got no amal. So uh, the one thing I used to do is, I was a wealthy person. And I used to give respite to the wealthy when they pay and their repayments. And uh, those who were financially difficulty and they were owing me, I gave them enough time that they needed and sometimes I would even uh, write it off. So Allah says that we are more rightful to write your, your, for your sins off. So this is the moment, these are the moments in Ramadan that we can, we can find those moments with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not fall onto the lines of, of nifaq because then nifaq will take us then onto, onto kufr. إِنَّ الْمُنَافِقِينَ فِي الدَّرْكِ الْأَسْفَلِ مِنَ النَّارِ The munafiqeen are in the lowest levels of Jahannam. Dark al-asfal. They are in the lowest levels of, of Jahannam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us in our amal, in our actions, from all forms of, uh, of ostentation, all forms of, uh, of showing and pride and nifaq. Nabi alayhi salatu wasallam was, was asked, and we end up with this hadith, that the person who does uh, jihad fi sabirillah with dual intention, on the one side, he seeks Allah's help, uh, happiness. And on the other side, he also is seeking some name. You know, people will talk, okay, you know, Brother Muhammad, he's the one who left uh, Auckland and he went and, you know, he was, he, you know, he fought until he died and he didn't come back and whatever else. And people will talk. So, so you have a dual intention. Maybe Ali Sadr Sam kept silent for a while and then he said, La shayya Allah, la shayya Allah, la shayya Allah. Three, Peter, the three times, nothing for this man, nothing, nothing for this person. Allah only accepts that which is 100% for his own self, for, for, for him. Done for him. May Allah forgive us and, and bless us. We are now entering into the middle 10 days of Ramadan, the days of forgiveness. So latch on to the mercies of Allah and the forgiveness of Allah Ta'ala. Secure your forgiveness and secure your Jannah.